Are you looking for the best in cosmetic and reconstructive surgery? Well, board certified Dr. Pedro Solar joins us today to explain what personal approach he can bring to his patients' needs and cares. Welcome to the show, Dr. Solar. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm well. I'm excited to have you here because I've actually heard of you before you were on the show. You've got a wonderful reputation out there. But let's talk about your practice. And of course, that board certification stands out there when I was introducing you. Talk about your background and why that's so important. Sure. Um, so I've been in the Tampa Bay area for almost 20 years. Uh, board certification is important simply because what it means is that you've been trained, fully trained in plastic surgery. So you've trained not only in the cosmetic, but also the reconstructive aspects of surgery. Uh, and many of the cosmetic procedures that we have are actually founded in reconstructive procedures. Um, what most people don't understand is that anyone can call themselves a cosmetic surgeon. That's not a true recognized board. Uh, only a plastic surgeon or a board certified plastic surgeon is recognized by the American Board of Medical Specialties. I think that's something in itself. I didn't realize that because I'm assuming that people can just throw that other title up there. What is the difference in board certification? More schooling? More testing? Uh, more well, recognition by the American Board of Medical Specialties. Uh, so our, the American Board of Plastic Surgery is one of the American uh, boards of uh, medical specialties. Um, so the, the training that one receives is at least six years in surgery, of three of which are plastic surgery. Uh, that's, of course, after a recognized medical school. Uh, and then uh, any other uh, fellowships that one may want to do afterwards to specialize within the field of plastic surgery. Well, let's talk about, too, working with your patients. Being able to be here in Tampa so long, that's got to be nice that you can form the relationships and really educate people because cosmetic surgery or reconstructive surgery, that's something that, it's an intimidating factor when people are thinking about it and just easing there. Talk about working with the patients and why that's so important to you. Well, I think the, the important thing is that when they first meet you, they're very nervous, obviously. Yeah. And so trying to get them to feel at ease, uh, listening to what they have to say. Uh, usually in the beginning of the consultation, the patient's going to be doing most of the talking. All you're going to do is listen, ask questions to kind of help lead them along. Um, but really, you have to listen. That's the only way you're going to get to know what they really want and what they really came in for. And of course, that's the ultimate goal. And I know a lot of times listening comes to exactly what they want. You were saying a lot of people still in the most popular procedure you do, right, is breast augmentation. That's correct. And of course, we've got some examples there, implants, which is, of course, something that does require a lot of the education that you were talking about. And you were educating me a little bit on some of the choices that people may have to make if they do come and visit you and want this kind of surgery, right? Yes, I was. I had actually, what we were talking about, so what you see here are three different silicone implants. Uh, the most popularly used is the Moderate uh, Plus Profile. Uh, if you look at it, it's almost a dome, but not quite a complete dome. It's not quite as full. Uh, the next one we have over is the high profile. So you can see it's, it's more oh, filled. Yeah. Even though they are very close in, in terms of volume, you can see this one sticks out a lot more. Absolutely. And so this helps to achieve better what we call profile or sticking out. Absolutely. Um, now what's the other, the third one there actually looks different. What's that about? Well, this is an anatomical or a shaped implant. I think you can see when I hold it up, the majority of the volume is in the bottom part of the, of the implant, sort of more natural looking breast. Great implant for women who have very little breast tissue or have a very tight lower pole or, if you will, the distance between the areola and the, uh, and the fold beneath the breast. You know what, in closing, I want to get your thoughts. It seems like over the years, these have just advanced medically. And what we're seeing now, implants were different than the ones that we saw years ago. And I'm assuming these are some of the most up-to-date that you are able to offer your patients, right? That's correct. Uh, so the ones that we were having problems with in the 80s where they were leaking and you were seeing them spread, uh, they weren't as cohesive. They were made that way because people at first felt that the cohesive were too firm. And so they had, with the leaking, there was not only silicone, but some oils that helped to hold everything together. Uh, and that was the problem. These are the gummy bears. So they're, they're high cohesive. Uh, they're all gummy bears. Uh, some people believe that gummy bear is only one specific type, but it's just the high cohesive gel. So there's no oils so that if they, if they rupture, you don't have the leaking that you had 
which is key implants. which is key well doctor thank you for coming on we hope you do come back and see us as well and if you want information there's also a special offer for morning blend viewers look at that deal right there five hundred dollars off any cosmetic surgery when you mention the morning blend there's the phone number website and again we hope you come back thank you for joining us thank today. you very much